Be nice to the birds And they'll be nice to you But if you're mean They'll poop on you Yeah Oh yeah now When you look up in the sky And you see one flying by You better watch out Cause it might just poop in your eyes. Sweet mother of Goody Goo. Tell Peter he's on in 15 seconds. Simple, yet satisfying. What are you doing, you Come on, guys, no more spit wires on the set. Baby! That's already on the set. All right, here we go. Hello again, and welcome to the jam. Today, we're all going to flock to our fine feathered friends. Consider the birds. It is estimated that there are nearly 9,000 different species of bird here with us on Earth. Blue jays, blackbirds, purple martins, and a few other shades as well. You know, when you sit down and really think about it, that's like billions and billions of birds. All over the world, birds are being counted, documented, and protected. One of the neat things about birds is that no matter where you live, be it the city, the suburbs, or the country, you can get involved with birds. And you don't even have to go outside. So today, we look at birds, the people that look at birds, and even the birds that look at us. <laughs> it happens on a boat called the Carefree Learner. Kids counting birds, protecting habitats, and getting involved. It's just... It's different than most classes because like you get like to go out and interact with like nature and stuff and get hands-on experiences and stuff and it's just nice being on the water and How did you find? For each of the three islands, uh, we write down the number of birds, the number of nests there are, the number on the nest, the offspring, and just the total number of birds we see all together. What we'd like to do is to protect these islands by having a no-wake zone in here and the students are using their data to petition the state for that purpose. They have already asked the state to put no trespassing zones here, and the signs you see on the islands were actually erected by the students. Mangroves are the saltwater trees. trees. <laughs> They're what traps the sediment for the islands to build and maintain their same size and shape. And because of the, of the, wake, of the wake, it's eroding the islands away and making them smaller and the mangroves are eventually dying. It moves the sand ultimately, and the mangroves are here to hold the sand in, but they can only do so much, so. And as they die back, then there's less and less islands for these birds to uh, nest on. You know, the students are very aware and cognizant of the problem, so if we can help the public understand that this is really one of the last strongholds, and these species have nowhere else to go, and if we can get them to put a no-wake zone here, we might be able to slow down the erosion and protect these islands. Well, when we were freshmen when we started, we were, I was like, basically, yeah, okay, we're going out on a boat, we get to get out of school, this is cool, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, the more we study it, the more I realized how um, this really does affect our, like, daily lives living in Sarasota, because, you know, any lots of people own boats in Sarasota, and this is, they're, just by driving by in their boat, they're ruining the habitat for the birds. So if, if, we, if we do our part and we just keep sending in data and showing them that what's happening, what the, the boats are doing with the wake, and what's happening to the islands, and eventually maybe we can help slow down the process of what's actually going to probably naturally going to happen if nothing's done. Yeah, I mean, it's something that we need to cherish and it's something that it, that's important to us. So yeah, definitely, our mindset has changed. Yeah. Cable Channel 39 presents visiting ornithologist Ingmar and Vespa they will be discussing their observations on birds of the world. Und im Glockenspiel und hi und mir und wer ist da? Und der Schmetterling, der ist ein guter Mann. Schmetterling. Und der Fleisch und der Birdie und der Lessen und der und der Glocken fließen. Wer ist da? Erstens, der ist der. Oh! Oh! 
Und du warst schon unter Pinien mit? Und du warst schon unter Mörlchen? Und du warst schon unter Hatschen unter Brrrr? 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 Brrrr?
got to work. Birds, dinosaurs, aliens, the connection is there. I know they hold the key to life on other planets. What secrets can I unlock? The origin of birds, the mechanics of natural flight, how to pick up chicks by breaking a funky groove. Hold it, mister. Birds, their nests, eggs, and even the feathers are protected under federal law. Don't mess with the birds. Or are they just the morons of the sky? <laughs> The tiniest bird in the world is the bee hummingbird. It also lays the smallest egg, about half an inch long. The biggest bird in the world is the ostrich. It lays up to a four pound egg. That is a big egg. It's thought that the very first bird was the Archaeopteryx. It lived about 140 million years ago and was the size of a crow. Similar to a reptile, but not really one. Well, sometimes you have to be kind of an, a detective to find birds out here. We're out in this great spot, and there's all this great habitat, and I can hear some birds, but I can't see any. So we're going to play a bit of a trick on them. So I'm going to do my owl call, and we'll see if any other birds come out here. Here we go. Sometimes when they hear the owl, they start to scold it. So I'm going to imitate the scolding sound. It's just a, it's a great way to get the birds to come out of the brush so you can get a look at them. It might be only a friendly blue bird called a scrub jay, but these students are learning a lot from it and doing their best to make sure it doesn't become extinct. Probably go on field trips six to eight times a year uh, to different uh, habitats, a chance for them to get out and uh, view Florida's different habitats as we would with any other state, wherever we were. It, it's an opportunity. They've been introduced to one, and hopefully they'll continue to, to carry this on and, and learn more about different species. We want this bird to be the um, state bird for Florida. And um, one of the debates was, you know, you don't see them everywhere. So um, that's why we make environments like this, you know, hopefully to increase the population of the bird. Therefore, you know, nobody can complain about not having enough anymore. Certainly puts a name and a face on the uh, things that they're trying to conserve and learn about. Um, it's one thing to look at pictures in the book or even on TV, but it's, a, it's another thing to go out and actually experience the things firsthand which is what the students are doing out here. I didn't know anything about the bird before I started, and then once I got started, I learned so much, but not only about the Florida scrub jay, about the Florida scrub jay, about my environment, about its environment, you know, about a, a lot about endangered species, plus we've learned a lot about government. I'm an outdoors person now. I love, you know, I love camping. I love going on hikes. I love doing stuff like this, and this is what started it. Mr. Cole was the one who really introduced me to the scrub jay and how it was a dangerous species and it was a important bird, you know, to our habitat. And I fell in love with these birds and I try to come out here when I get time to. <laughs> well, I just like going out into a natural state and being able to, you know, communicate with the animals. I mean, like, see them, view them, see how they live. You know, ever since I started coming out here, it's been something that I've really enjoyed. I come out a lot. Birds actually walk on their toes and keep their heels in the air. They also have no teeth. Hang it up. Primarily, the uh, Sutton Avian Research Center worked throughout the southeastern United States, and we uh, released eagles into Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, North Carolina, and Oklahoma. So what we did was we went down to Florida, which has over 600 nesting pairs, and we would pick up eggs out of the nest, which is uh, much easier said than done, I can assure you. We would have to climb these 100-foot trees, and we would collect all oh, around uh, 60 eggs per year. And we would then drive them back in a motor home. From the time that we picked them up, we had to have them in an incubator because they have to be kept within a half a degree Fahrenheit uh, in order to hatch them. 
we would then raise them by using puppets, uh, which we fed the young eagles with, and so they would not be tame. We wanted them, of course, to be wild, and then we wanted them to be imprinted on their own uh, image. Then we built 30-foot towers that were barred on top, and we would put the young birds in there at about eight to, to 10 weeks of age, and they would stay in there two to three weeks, and during that time, they become fixed on that location. We would uh, uh, release the eagles after they had spent a couple of three weeks in the tower that have radio transmitters on them, and they would home back daily for uh, two or as much as three months to this tower and get food that we placed out for them. And in doing that, they eventually, they learn to hunt on their own. They don't need to be taught by their parents. It's genetically programmed. And they would eventually uh, disperse. The first year after we released birds, say, here in Oklahoma, we had one bird back in the spring, but it wasn't long before we uh, had birds nesting again. And now, here in Oklahoma, where we had no eagles nesting at all, we've now got uh, about 33 pairs uh, back nesting as a result of our release program. And there are similar numbers in the other states where we work. So uh, we're very proud of that. What's happening, my people? I right don't. It's me, your fellow Funkadelic, just here trying to get you to understand a little something about the birds. Yes, I'm here to defend the birds. Why? Because they ain't doing nothing to nobody. They minding their own business, flapping around, just trying to find a little nest to call home. That's why I got my hair like this. Anyway, I'm just here to let you know it's all about defending the birds. We're trying to uh, learn scientific things like population of certain birds and where they migrate, when, and the numbers of males and females. You know, we have <laughs> birds that are migratory in this country, some that migrate south for the winter. We even have some that breed in the south and migrate north for the summer. So we have migration going different directions. We even have migration going from the east coast to the west coast and from the west coast to the east coast. It's the insect eaters that we find are most, uh, include most of the migrants because in the wintertime, there's no insect food available for them unless there happen to be a woodpecker. And then they can dig their insects out of a tree. Um, the bird will come and it won't see the net. Is, as you see, it's not real visible. And it'll come right into here and it'll bounce into a bag. Uh, we have a bird here. This bird doesn't have a very strong bill, so it's not gonna hurt, really, if it bites. Other bigger birds would hurt a little bit more. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, the best thing to do is just sort of stay away and keep, you can watch it, but don't try and catch it. Wild birds are protected by both the federal and the state government. Any work with wild birds, any handling of them, any manipulation of them requires special authorization. You can kill the birds, there's a high risk because they can become very stressed out if you don't know how to get them out of the net properly. I think I finally got it, yes, we've got it, we got it out. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice cat bird. Bird bands come in a string of 100 for songbirds and they are in numerical sequence and they have to be used in numerical sequence in order to uh, keep the record straight. <laughs> okay, and now you've got it. There you go. You're going to slip that all the way in and squeeze as hard as you can. Got it. Sometimes birds can be tagged. Again, what they're doing, they fly back into the net and you'll catch them again. And you can um, see when they were last dated and you'll still record this band number. Uh, he's ready to be released. To release it, we don't toss it up in the air. Uh, we just open our hand and let the bird go. If the bird is held on its back, it doesn't realize that it's not being held, even though you open up your hand, because a bird normally has no pressure on its back. So if it's got pressure on its back, it thinks it's still being held. And you can hold it like that, and, and it just thinks that it, it can't get away. But if we turn that bird over, off it goes. <laughs> well, 
what kids need to understand is that birds are just so important as part of our environment. I mean, they do so many different things. For example, they're one of the best forms of natural pesticides that you'll ever find. Birds eat millions and millions of pounds of insects every year, everything from the mosquitoes that bite you to the bugs that are eating your mother's roses. And so they're great to have around for that reason. They help regulate the environment they're in. They control the prey species that are out there and their food for other species. They're just part of this web of life that's so important for people because we're part of that web too. Oh, it's a little bit of 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 a little bit